Okay, so this is for all the running coaches out there. I'm gonna go over what seems to be not a widely known tool to design and push out workouts to clients. And this is the Garmin Clipboard app. Even if you're not a coach, but you use a Garmin, stay tuned because you can use this too and it's absolutely free. Hey there, Wrinkled Runner here. I've been using Garmin Clipboard for my Garmin wearing clients for over a year now. If you are a coach, you are probably using something like Final Surge or Training Peaks, which is what I use. I use Final Surge when a client does not have a Garmin. I can't remember how I stumbled on the Garmin Clipboard app, but if you search Garmin Clipboard Team app, you'll find it. I'm going to go over how to use the platform and then review it at the end. You can get the app at the Apple Store, the App Store, or on Google Play. Once you've downloaded it, okay, so we are going to go, we're going to open the Garmin Connect app, and I'm blocking out my uh, athlete roster names, but you can see that I have five athletes and one is in person and four are virtual and team YouTube um, I just added for this you are so what you can do is well, it's, we'll create another one so I'm going to create another team and we'll call it um, example two and then select the sport we are running and save okay so example two we're going to uh, invite an athlete so we're going to invite and what happens is you can if you're in person have the person scan this if you are emailing because you're a virtual coach you can just share it and if you hit the share button then it will bring up well here let me do it you can bring up um, how you want to do the invitation and then you can send people a message or, or uh, print it in an email okay so once that happens and then the athletes will be uploaded to here once they accept the invitation now one thing you have to do with this app it doesn't refresh while it's up so you have to go out of it and then we bring it up so you know if I'm on the iPad um, so if even if I swipe up you know you're still you still have all of you know all of this going on so you need to get rid of it and then go back into it and then everything will refresh and it will be this is one of my athletes and he does strength work and he does runs okay so this is showing all the things that he's done in the past 30 days i'm going to go to my virtual running team but i'm going to pick my husband okay so this is dave and this is the past 30 days now you can custom see what's going on um, i usually do a week at a time a week out now my husband is doing rehab uh, on his achilles so he's running he's run walking right now he's doing a four minute run and two minute walk and when that starts feeling good he can up it because his PT says so not because I say so but his PT has given him clearance to start to run again and so we're building him up slowly so when you go into what they've done you can see their elevation you can see the circumstances uh, you know the humidity the wind the temperature and the time so you can see their heart rate the cadence and then you can see all of the splits so it's broken up into uh, how you set up the workout so we've got five minutes walking as a warm-up and then he runs for four minutes then he walks for two minutes runs for four you know and so on okay so this is showing obviously up and down because he's walk running for a someone who's running you know it'll it'll be a little bit more linear 
and then they can say how they're feeling. They give an RPE at the end of each workout. So it was somewhat hard, but he felt normal. Okay, so we are going to give him another workout. So for tomorrow, we're gonna to do the same for two because as you can see, he's only getting been able to get in one run. If you look at the stats from like the past 14 days, you see he's really not getting a lot of stuff done. Now this is a little different only because this day I didn't put in his workout. He just used it from the other time. But if you have a workout and you've put it in, this is what you're going to see. So you'll be able to see the scheduled workout. And I'm going to go over the athlete app uh, in a few weeks, but they'll be able to see this on their athlete app. I always tell my athletes to look at the run before they go out and run so that when something switches over, like from the warm up to the repeat, they're not questioning what they're supposed to be doing so that they have a good idea of what's going on. Okay, so we're going to put in a workout for him for tomorrow and we're gonna switch over to July and then I'm gonna go back to this week. Okay, so in order to do that, you go down to add workout from the date that you want so I have all of, these are all workouts that I've built for my athletes and for myself. This is day five miles with 10K speed work. Obviously this was before he did, did his Achilles. So, so you can view what this is and you can view all of the things that I put in here. So as warm up, I always do by heart rate. Some of my clients I do it by pace. It just depends on the situation. This was what his run was supposed to be, his recovery and then his, he did repeats. And you can edit the different things by going into edit. So for example, if he was gonna do another five miles with 10K speed work, then I could just edit this particular workout. I wouldn't have to create a whole new one. You know, say he's, because he's rehabbing, but he, it, you know, we're a year out, I, can, I could adjust these paces to something different. Okay, and then you can schedule the workout. So you can post it. I'm not gonna post it because I'm absolutely not having him do um, five miles with 10K of speed work. So in order to create a new workout for him, I would hit new workout, select my activity, and then you have to give it a name. So what I do is put in, somewhere in this line, I put in the athlete name. So Dave, um, we're still going to do a 4-2 rehab, do some, I'll, something a little different just so it's different. I'll, do, I'll give him a 10-minute uh, warm-up instead of a 5-minute warm-up. Okay, so we're going to do a 10-minute warm-up and we just walk it so he's not even jogging so I don't even need to give him a heart rate or anything like that. He's just walking. Then we do a run. Now for... Okay, so we don't do a run for him because we do a repeat, and I'll show you that in a second. But if you were going to just do a straight run for somebody, you then select whether they do by time, by distance, lap button press, which I don't ever do. I always give my clients, you know, if they have a 10-minute warm-up, they want to go move on to the next thing. Some people actually like to do the lap button press, and so, you know, maybe they'd get another minute in of warm-up, or maybe, the, you know, they've jogged eight minutes, they feel like they warmed up, and so they could hit the lap button press, which would take them into the next thing. I don't do that, um, so if you do that, then I'm sure you know how to set that up. We're gonna say that this client is going to run for four miles, and their intensity target, you can either do heart rate, cadence, or pace, we're gonna do pace, Let's say they're going to run a six minute. I use a Macmillan uh, calculator for working out my ranges for my clients. I find that it's really, really accurate to, you know, race predictions and, and when someone will say, oh, I ran this um, and then I plug that in, it will match. I have found it will match within 15 seconds of the last race that they did. It's, so I, I like to use Macmillan a lot. Um, anyway, this is a 
this is all fake. It has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> That's a really big range. But anyway, you can put the pace range. And then, and of course, on the watch, it will beep them if they're out of that range. And then you can add a cool down. I'll show you a repeat because for him, we do repeats. And so we do five repeats. He runs by time. So he runs by four minutes. Um, no intensity. And then he recovers for two. And no intensity. And then we're done. Okay. Now, so for him, this, you can just, I could delete the run and say, oh yeah, he's not ready for four miles. Okay. So then you would save it. Okay. And then you could pick it and then post it for tomorrow. Okay. And again, I'm not going to post this one because it's not the right thing. So that's how you would set up a workout. Now, what I like to do um, with my clients, I do two weeks at a time. I do the first week and that's what I focus on telling them, letting them know about things, giving notes on, things like that. But then I want them to be able to see two weeks out just so that they know what's coming. We can discuss whether, you know, the long run is, is going to be too much. We can discuss whether, oh, you have me doing this much work on this day, but I have an early meeting. So can we change things up a bit? Okay. So you'll see on here these little icons and I don't know how you can see how much you can see. This is a count. So say the person also does goes to the gym. So I usually have running and because I'm a personal trainer, I also have people who do gym work that will show up. And then this count would say two, that they did two workouts that day. This is a pain tracker. So when they're recording any pain or injuries, they're going to put that here through their app and that will come up and then you'll be able to see it. I find that this is good just for patterns. Like if you're seeing that after every speed work session, they're saying pain, then that's something that may need to be adjusted. And if you, and if you aren't keeping track of that, those things may not be apparent to you. And now this is a note. So I can add a note to his running now and you can see, only I could see this. So I could say, Dave is struggling, may need to pull back. Okay. And you know, for some things we want to discuss with our clients in a tactful manner, but then this way we may be able to put a note in for ourselves of, you know, I don't know what we're really thinking. Um, and then I can also add a note that if I have other coaches, all the coaches will see it, still not the client. So if you have other coaches in your, in your thing, you can show them that. Now this is an athlete note. So an athlete note, the client will see this. Okay. So this is like texting the wrong person. Make sure if you write in this section, um, how are you feeling? you know, is everything RPE of three, you know, that may be a more tactful way of, of asking how they're feeling on these runs. Okay. So then you're going to see all the notes that you've set up and that they will also see. And so it's highlighted here for that day because that day has a note on it. So if you're looking back, over the month or over the week or whatever, you can see where you may have left notes for them. Now there for the workout library, I don't ever use the Garmin library. Um, and this is why let's just pick one at random. So this is a tempo run 10 minute tempo, warm up, recover, run 10 minutes. Okay. Recover. And this is an, the lap button press thing, um, which I already said I don't do. I don't do it at myself even. I, I just, I've screwed up so many times when I've done the coaching, you know, thing, the Garmin coaching thing where they have you do a lap button press and then have run like a maniac during a speed part, but I didn't press the lap button. So I'm still like warming up and I, I just, I can't even talk about it. I'm going to get so mad. So, but, it, you can't edit these. 
See, you, so this, you can't edit them. So they have to know what their paces are going to be and they have to be able to keep track of that. So, you know, for a tempo, if you're doing RPE, then that may be something that you'd want to use just so that they don't have a pace range and so that you are, you run, you know, a seven and don't have a pace range. So that can be, that can be helpful, but most of my clients, I do a, uh, a pace range for, for the most part. Okay, so if I, and if I was going to put in all of his workouts for here, I can go into the workout library and I can say, oh, Dave needs rehab like every day. Um, but what you can do is if you have your clients in here, then you can pick a workout that they've already done if you're going to repeat that and then put it in on a day-by-day -day basis. What I like to do is is put in everything that I'm supposed to put in and then just do it very quickly and you can scroll through the days this way and you know we can add a workout another for to rehab and do it that way now the other thing you could do is edit one that's already in here which I already showed you okay now I'm going to go over what I like and what I wish was different about this app on the positive side, it is very easy to add different workouts and edit them. And I can do that on my iPad Pro with my keyboard. I don't know if it's because I'm older or what, but I like to do most things on my iPad or laptop, not on my phone. The paid platforms um, may have more metrics to track your athletes, but I find I don't really use those so much. And so what they have on the Garmin clipboard is enough for me. If you use the other coaching platforms, you know you can do the same, but this one's totally free. If your athletes are using a Garmin, and right now all of mine actually are, your coaching platform can be free. Some of the things I would like to see the developer work on is, first of all, it should be super easy to change the day of the workout. Now that being said, this is really made for coaches of like high school or college teams in mind. And even if one of your athletes is sick, your practice days are going to be set. But it can't be that difficult to be able to grab a workout and drop it into the next day. Life happens and sometimes a whole week needs to be shifted. And I usually put together the workouts a week at a time for each client. So it's very time consuming when I have to delete the run from one day and redo it for another. Sometimes it makes sense, depending on the run and the athlete, to just delete it and move on. But with someone, say, training for a marathon and the long run needs to be moved, that's a pain. Because I'm also a personal trainer, I add strength work as part of my athlete's training. And I won't spend a ton of time on this point, but you can only use the exercises that are loaded into the program to add to your clients. This means if I want to add in something else, I have to write an extensive note about it. So even though by all appearances, this app seems to be a Garmin produced app, it is treated as a third party app. So there are some things it doesn't allow, like being able to see the steps in the Garmin Connect section. Now, if your client has the clipboard for athletes app, you can refer to the steps in that, and I'll go over that in a few weeks. So it's not a game changer for me, but it is weird that it is treated as a third party app. So if you know me at all, you know that I am really bad at math. So well, thank goodness for training pace calculators. Now it used to be when I built a workout for my clients that used minutes instead of miles, there'd be a count as you were building it in the Garmin clipboard app. So it'd be easy to give my starting clients a 30 minute run with a five minute warm up, five minute cool down, and intervals of say seven run to walk. I didn't have to figure out how many intervals to do because it added it up as I did the workout. Now for some reason, they don't do that anymore. I never understand why any apps decide to take stuff away. Why? Just give us smart additions to what we can do, work out the bugs, whatever, but stop taking things away, which seemingly is random. Anyway, so those things are annoyances to me and maybe in the future they'll tweak it more. So if you're a running coach, this app could be better, but especially if you're first starting out or all your athletes use Garmin, this free app could be what you are looking for. I find that a lot of coaches don't know about it, so I hope this was helpful to you. 
Next week, I'm going to be talking about SMART goals. You may have heard of them and how to make SMART goals. Now I'm gonna talk about the pros of SMART goals for running and some interesting critiques of the process as well. I know this video was geared towards running coaches, but if you aren't one, I am a running coach and a personal trainer from Buffalo, New York, and I've been coaching one-on-one -on -one in person for a few years now, but now I'm doing virtual coaching as well. I'm working on a new website just for the coaching business, but until then, follow the link in the description to see what I can do for you. You can sign up for my once a month newsletter to get all of the information and all of the content from this channel, my podcast, blog, and any other resources that I have found that can help you with your running. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the run.